This week's episode has been sponsored by Oh My Bod, shifting the evolution of pleasure. Hi, I'm Suzanne, and you are listening to Sex Advice for Seniors. And this week I am with Marie Maurice who has got a fa- the name, I, I love the name of this website, which is Lilith Your Life. And for those of you who don't know, Lilith existed before Eve. And the only reason that I'm familiar with Lilith at all is that my friend Monique Rafi wrote a book that was based on the archetype of Lilith called The Tryst. And so that's how I got to know Lilith, who in the book anyway, was quite a chaotic disruptive, sexually confident woman who comes into this couple's life and and is quite disruptive and then and then ultimately departs. I won't I won't spoil the ending for you. But I got to know this Lilith character and I was very curious about her. So when I saw that Marie was using Lilith as this as the name of her website, I just knew I had to talk to you, Marie. So welcome. Welcome Thank to you. Advice for Seniors. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be to be with you and, and your listeners today. So thank so um let's start with this whole idea of Lilith and why you've decided that Lilith is the character that you focus on and the person that you focus on to work with women around the idea of sexual empowerment. Why Lilith? Yeah, I mean it's a really good point. So I think a bit like you, Susan, I, I didn't know anything about um, Lilith until I actually uh, got dragged by one of my friends to uh, a really good exhibition at the British Museum around uh, the representation of female empowerments through the centuries, uh, you know, sort of through various uh, sort of artifacts and religions. And she, my friend said, oh, you know, Lilith, the first woman is going to be there. And I was like, who, who is Lilith? So I really had no idea. That was two or three years ago when I sort of started my, my practice as a as a certified sex coach. And um, it really dawned on me that Lilith was this very powerful, um, sometimes depicted exactly as you said, um, in, a, in a very negative way. Um, yes. Because Lilith is initially, as I said, you know, the first woman, and that's in the sort of older Jewish tradition. Um, it's not very much mainstream, but a lot of people I think are, are not familiar with, with her character. She, she basically was made equal. So unlike Eve, you know, she was made equal to Adam. She was her, his first wife. And they were living in a fairly sort of equal life, uh, until the day where Adam decided that you know, so she, she should become his, uh, his subordinate. Um, and she was not happy with that. And she decided to not just sexually as, as his subordinate, but also in, in all, all sense of the term. So she decided to, to leave paradise because it was no longer paradise for her. And, and, and she left and she then decided to, you know, who knows what she, I, I like to think that she went on and stuff, you know, had loads of fun and, and created a, a life for herself. Um, but, but what's really interesting and, uh, you know, and I'm, I'd be very curious to read your friend's book is that, um, I've read quite a lot around you know, the mythology of, of Lilith, and it's always um, depicted in a quite negative way. Yes, because um, I think she was punished. You know, so, so the way the way Lilith as a, as this sort of you know a female um, empowered uh, woman able to kind of break free from from this subordination or, or the willingness of of the man to subordinate her. She's been punished through centuries and depicted as this demon coming to haunt, coming to taunt, coming to seduce men. Uh, so, right. yeah. uh, and breaking up marriages and breaking up relationships. So that's, that's obviously not how I, <laughs> I envisage Lilith. Um, it's, she's coming back a lot stronger recently and she has survived through the centuries. She's coming back much stronger in terms of, you know, sort of as, as a, as a goddess. As yeah. someone who is, you know, sort of inspiring women and who is giving them strength as well to, to go through and live their lives and discover themselves. So that's, that's why I decided to, to call my practice, uh, lilithyourlife.com. Yeah. Yeah. So Lilith is now a verb. Exactly. It's a new verb. And in fact, you'll see the definition on my website. <laughs> I had yeah. a bit of a play with that, with my, uh, sort of, you know, 
website designer and um, she, she was laughing around it. But yes, we're two Lilith, yeah. you know, so to, to empower yourself and of course, you know, sexually sort of discover what, um, what can be done to, to, you know, enhance your, your pleasure and, um, and get rid of all the things that um, sort of stop you from doing that. And your own journey sounds sl- also quite familiar to my own in terms of you were married for a long time and then I, I'm, I'm suspecting you became dissatisfied in some way because you're not married anymore. And then you went off and you then retrained as a, as a sex coach. And I'm curious to know just a little bit about your background and what that journey was like for you. What, what happened to create this change in your own life yeah, that's a, it's a good point. I mean, I know it's quite similar, I think, to a lot of the women, at least that I work with, and, and as you said, to, to your story as well. I think there's two things going on that were going on for me. One was on a personal level, um, you know, sort of being married for, for almost 20 years, so quite, quite a substantial amount of time. Most and most marriages, actually, as I hear. Um, and, and, you know, overall, I would say, a fairly happy marriage, in fact, you know, sort of um, very much who I chose to be when I was, I married quite young and, yeah. you know, sort of had this, this, um, this great sort of uh, relationship. But I, but I think something really sort of switched in me um, around the time I, I turned sort of 40. I, I, I wanted more. I wanted different. I wanted um, to kind of start exploring. And, and, and it was just like, um, it's hard to describe it on the radio, but, um, on audio, but it's radio. And it shows my age, but just, <laughs> but just this this sort of full uh, force, you know, coming up and bubbling up to to the surface, where you you know you have to kind of act and do something and 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 create you know, sort of the space for yourself. So that 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 was one thing, and and I think sexually, absolutely, um, you know, it's not necessarily that we become sort of probably we became not as compatible with each other you know and I wanted something kind of different I wanted more I, I had this urge you know this libido really raising so so I wanted to act on that um, and then the, professionally kind of quite a similar journey in fact because I'd been in a quite conventional um, you know very very exciting but quite conventional um, sort of work when I was working on climate change and it was all about sort of, you know helping others but in a not in a Nina focused way um, and I just again sort of, you know felt like this was the time for me to, to to shift and to to create a different uh, different chapter so that's why I also retrained but I think the combination of the two you know sort of leaving my my relationship um, initially being quite lost because you're yeah. on your own and I'm sure you've experienced that as well Susan but um, what a yeah, we we don't we don't get prepared for for that sort of you know out of relationship. We get prepared for marriage, but we don't get prepared for for separation or divorce. So it's it's it was quite a a journey. But but that combination of uh, finding myself again and and also retraining sort of was was very much linked. Yeah, absolutely. I think as well. I always say to women that are forty, and especially if they're single, that that for me that decade of my life was quite extraordinary in that, as you explained it, the raging libido. I suspect that lot, and I always, and I don't know anything about it other than it felt like my body was telling me that this was the last opportunity I was going to have to make babies, even though I didn't want babies, but it was just, it was just the, the, the sexual energy was kind of on a, at an all time high coupled Absolutely. with, coupled with not having the emotional drama that I used to have when I was younger with all that sexual energy. So I, I felt like I had all the libido without all the bullshit that I had from my youth. So I could really have a lot of fun without a lot of guilt. And that yeah. was, and that was, I always tell people like, if you're single and you're a 40 year old woman and you're not looking for a life partner, like this is the best time of your life to go and have some fun because mostly we're, you know, we're still healthy and fit and everything and we can look good. And we've got all those chemicals going and you know telling everybody that we're we're really up for it and 
And, and so sending and sending the signal it's an incredible period actually of, of people's life you know obviously yeah. depending what the situation people are in of course you so I understand that it, it, that's that's if you're single or if you're maybe in an open relationship which is you know depending on the contract you might have with your with your partner but but for sure <laughs> I, I, I've had a, a similar experience of explosion in so many different ways you know uh, in a literal and not literal way where you are discovering the sort of the forever expanding sort of uh, possibilities of of your bodies and 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 your mind and um, yeah it's 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 absolutely amazing to to kind of be able to explore that and I mean I'm really grateful to have had that time as well not not that it's over but it's definitely yeah. sort of a, a, a chapter where you know I felt like anything was 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 possible um, yeah yeah. I'm, yeah I'm kind of relieved in a way that it's not <laughs> so, it was a little bit distracting if I'm really honest and I'm. And I'm not as distracted anymore. So yeah, I, I'm quite grateful at the fact that I'm not, I'm not like living. Um, I, I can't remember whether it was George Melly or somebody that said it was like having the monkey on your back, but it really did feel sometimes like a real pressure all the time to just want to have sex. But yeah, I don't, I don't feel that. And when you, when you left your marriage, did you, um, was it for someone else or did you go on dating apps or like what, how did it manifest itself? I just. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So there wasn't anyone in particular. There were many. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Well, <laughs> it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't what triggered the, the, the sort of, you know, breakup, if you like, it was quite a long, so sort of steady uh, and, and sort of mutual uh, agreement to, to part. Yeah. I think we'd, we'd come to kind of the end of our relationship and I, I you know, that, that was, also completely fine it, it happens yeah. um but uh, to recognize that you know so sort of as soon as uh, as as possible so you don't get into drama or because you know exits can be can be complicated so um it was a fairly good you know sort of divorce in that sense and um no i went on to to exactly what you just said sort of suzanne d- described you know sort of being single once i kind of you know found my feet a little bit and had this urge this this libido kind of really just very much there as you said that's, that's more than a monkey i don't know it was like a gorilla really she's just there all the time um it's um yeah i just i just i just went on a lot of dating apps and and you know were really active mostly with younger men uh you know that tended to be a thing at the time you know so if they were they a lot of them wanted to explore with all the women and yes. um and I was one of them and you know as you said no string attached you know sort of completely so sort of free to to explore no desire to sort of you know settle or have kids or whatever with them so so it was it was an amazing time and I'm still I'm still friends with some of the you know the people I, I met at the time so it was incredible yeah in that way mm-hmm. yeah I mean yeah me too I mean I I did a little interview this morning for a girl who was doing a documentary about online dating when you're older and I was really surprised by what she told me that many of our participants had said they still they felt a lot of shame about using dating apps and and feeling like they needed to do that to find someone and Mm. I just thought really because everybody all the young people are using them now so it's not and they don't seem to have any shame around it so I felt really surprised by that reaction is that is that something you come across when you're working with women because I know you said you work with quite a lot of women around divorce post-divorce trying to get them back into the swing of things get their mojo back what's your experience of that yeah, it's it's really interesting because a lot of women I work with are midlife or perhaps a little bit later life, you know, so definitely our our age group. Um and it I don't know if it's a generational thing because when I work with younger women sometimes, you know, I don't sort of get that at all. But from from, from the kind of you know, fifties upward sort of age group, there tends to be this very strong stigma still very much attached to I'm not even talking about sort of you know casual sex or hooking up no. I'm just talking about the dating apps themselves you know it's 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 really uh, something that I work with my clients on even before anything because uh, not everyone you know is going to definitely going to want to have online fun and so on but it's definitely a way to 
because 50% of women over 50 are, you know, sort of single. So it's yeah. a large group of women uh, and that grows over time, right? As we know. So how, how to kind of, you know, ensure that we take the shame away from, from, you know, even going on an app and creating your profile. And so I'm helping a lot of women just doing that as a, as a foundation. Yeah. And why do you, what is it about that? Do you think that scares them? Is it about being vulnerable? Is it about using technology? What it, What is it specifically around using online dating to meet people that fright that you know that worries them? Yeah, I mean, my experience of it, uh, both personally and you know, with my clients, is probably three things. One is the technology. Some people are quite adverse to it, which I you know understand. It's like, how does it work? Kind of creating the the the, the sort of you know the notifications coming up, and so uh, so it's really kind of demystifying that. And then the other two, exactly what you just mentioned, you sort of the 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 second one is not having grown up with those apps and finding yourself maybe sort of ten, fifteen years. 20 years later even more sometimes uh having had a monogamous you know relationship where you yeah. didn't have to use the app ever and then finding yourself faced faced with that and then and i think the third element which you know is probably there for sure but also sometimes overplayed is is the the safety side of things right mm-hmm. people not necessarily feeling safe but there yeah. are ways to work around that you know you can have a good buddy that you tell or let know that you know you're going to be out and and only meeting in public places i mean there, there's just loads of ways to to work around that but i think that that's those are probably the the kind of key fears i would say and and as you said ultimately making yourself vulnerable and and putting yourself out there, you know, and, and who, who do you want to be? What, what, what side of you are you going to put on the, on the app, you know, and, and that's, 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 that can be quite scary, I think, for people as well. Yeah. I, I went out with a man once and he had recently left his long term partner and he went on one of these apps and this gorgeous, gorgeous woman approached him and, He got completely wrapped up in this. You know, he was writing her like reams and reams of stuff. In fact, he's no longer with us, but I found a little book that he'd actually written about her. And then he discovered she she was just, you know, looking for money, right? Oh, wow. Um, He was quite shell-shocked by that. So I think it's not just women that worry about these things. It's also men. But of course, of course, once you've been burnt once and hopefully you haven't given anybody any money and you've, you know, working mm. with people like yourself, you, you you say, look, if anybody asks you this, do not give away your detail. You know, do you know, you can just prep people on yeah. on the safety aspect, then hopefully you won't you'll be very, you know, mindful of that moving forward i mean i think it's almost impossible not to meet somebody who's who's maybe got an ulterior motive equally i just think you get familiar with this sort of stuff and then you realize actually there are plenty of nice people out there 100 percent. there's loads of nice people um and, and not only that but i think you know what those apps do they they accelerate right so they they're going to accelerate the speed the the number of people you might meet and so on but the, the principle sort of remains the same which is if you walk in the bar you're gonna meet someone you've never met and all those potential risks right are there it's just yeah. it, exactly what you said it's kind of creating your boundaries and you know sort of yeah, making your radar a little bit more sort of um, accelerated, so so you know you know what's what's going on. But but I've 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 heard mostly good stories, you know, uh, yeah. and uh, and so I think that's important to sort of say that out there as well. So it's not yeah. just the scary the scary ones. Yeah, yeah. Nearly everybody I meet, I've met online, to be honest, and I'm you know I I don't have a problem with it. So when we talk about sexual empowerment which I know is a big word on your website about yeah. making women sexually empowered. What does that mean for you? It means, it means quite a lot of things, but I think the most important thing, and that goes back to what we were saying earlier, is first of all, is, is the, this education. You know, so whether it's educating yourself on the apps, because that's not something you've had to use before, educating yourself about you know, sort of how do you operate on your own if you're just freshly sort of, you know, single or 
not necessarily freshly, but if, if, if you are not no longer in a partner sort of relationship, but, or if you are also educating yourself, you're, you're about things that you can do to create, you know, sort of this, this empowerment. So, so I think the key word around empowerment for me is this, this sort of knowing that you have agency, yeah. that you can take ownership, you know, and I've, I've heard some of your guests, you know, sort of saying that previously on your, on your, um, sort of other episodes, but it's just so important to kind of convey that message to, to women and men, of course, you know, not just women but I tend to work mostly with women um, to kind of create your own you know your own pleasure you're, you're responsible for your pleasure so that's that's what I you know so if I work with with women and, and it doesn't mean that you can't share it you know with someone else of course but ultimately it starts with you so that's that's what uh, female empowerment actually sort of you know, means for me and do you what's the percentage of women you think that have come to you because they're they're okay, but they want more. And people that feel like they've just completely missed out. You yes. Know, that, that they don't even know what sexual empowerment looks like. Yeah. Yeah. And that's really interesting you say that, Susan, because that, I would have, if I had to group, and I don't particularly like to, to box people, but if I had to group, you know, the, 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 the women I work with, I would say exactly that. About 50% of the women I work with are, they're not clueless. That's not at all. You know, I don't want to sound negative, but they have never had the chance to explore what it actually means to be sexually empowered. And they might have heard something from their friends or, you know, read something somewhere and they want to kind of explore more in a very confidential sort of, you know, space, which I, I offer. Yeah. Um, and then the, the other group is, uh, you know, <laughs> it's a lot more empowered, a lot more, uh, in exploratory mode, but they want more. They want to enhance, you know, what else is there that we can do as a, as a couple or, uh, yeah. you know, talking about opening their relationships or talking about stuff, you know, I had a couple the other day who wanted to explore that they are long distance quite a lot of the time. So what, what could be done for them to maintain a, you know, a, an active sort of sexual relationship? So, so th- those are really quite different groups. And I would say about 50 50 of the, of the women I work with, you know, in, at the moment. But it, I'm, yeah. sure, I'm sure it will vary as well. Yeah. And of the women that have not had or feel like they've missed out on sexual pleasure, what is the motivator for them to do something about it? Because I see a lot of women that I know who feel, who I suspect have come to associate sex just not not with pleasure, but with responsibility. Mm. So they've been in a relationship where their pleasure hasn't been prioritized at all. And as a result of that, they've probably never experienced what a fulfilling sexual relationship looks like. And so they just think, do you know what? I'm, menop- I'm at the stage where I don't have to have kids anymore. I'm not responsible anymore for procreating. So I'm just going to ditch this and get on with my life without having to think about any of it. And then there's another group that go, maybe now's the time to do something. I have to say, I don't meet many of those people. (laughs) I mean, a lot of the other kind, a lot of the other kind. Yes. Um, yeah. and, and most of those are people that tell me, I don't even know how you could still be interested in this. Like, mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I agree with you. I think, you know, I, I think that would reflect as well my, my experience, you know, sort of people I work with. There's, I mean, obviously, because they come to me, you know, they, yeah, they, they will have had that sort of, uh, that, that process that's, that going on in their lives. But, there's there's exactly all the other women and, and men who, who don't even have kind of almost ruled it out you know sort of no no sex because it's just it's just too painful too complicated too too many things um and that's that's why i spend a lot of time educating you know, stuff out there and that's why i was you know delighted to be on your podcast and the importance of kind of uh, you know i have my own as well like just being out there and just constantly repeating so you know the importance of um, of masturbation, of 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 you know self love, of of self pleasure, because because if we don't start with that, you know, there's just no need to even talk about you know, sort of the rest. That, for me, that is the most important message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. being able to, and there are there are amazing toys that you know that are available out there who can really which can really enhance that that experience so even if 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 you're listening and it's not something that is on your mind and you've i'm i'm, I'm assuming that if you are listening it's probably on your mind but if it's not you know 
um, yeah, maybe, maybe it, it, it is about starting kind of exploring your body a little bit and, and, and just seeing how it reacts and, and looking at yourself in the mirror and focusing on the positives of your parts because we, we're all very beautiful in our own ways. But it's, it's recreating that sort of, you know, that confidence, I think, in the first place. Yeah, I suppose, you know, it can be very demoralizing, as we know, if you are not the instigator of leaving your relationship and it hasn't been done voluntarily and you may feel kind of quite rejected by, you know, not just your partner, but that may be an, a bigger of feeling. of uh, So, you know, getting back to your own pleasure, I think, is, is so important. Mm. And I know so many people, and I, I, again, I think there's an age thing about it. We weren't, we didn't have much sex education when we were growing up. I don't know if in France it was any different, but for me, no. I didn't really have anything. Um, so I kind of had to learn. It was just me in a shower hose for a while. And, <laughs> and, I, and I had to learn all of that stuff, you know, in the field. And and for so many people, the the shame is compounded by might be compounded by religion might be compounded by other forms other tra- you know trauma of course all sorts of other things so how ha- you know is that something that you find as well as having to unravel yes a lot of yeah. other stuff that goes on around it Absolutely. I mean, you know, that's the thing about sex is that we, we've talked about this energy, which I, I think is captured, you know, for me by, by Lilith, but, you know, ultimately is this sexual energy that we all have that we could, you know, sort of can be very dormant. So it's about practicing self-compassion to start with and the work I do. So I'm not a therapist just to be, you know, yeah, fully, yeah. fully clear on that, but I do work, you know, sort of the model that I've been trained with is very holistic and it does touch on, you know, sort of the mind, the energy, the body, of course, the spirit and then the, the emotions as well, because everything is linked. So, uh, so the, the way I work with my client is very much to, to approach all that, all all those dimensions, which which might then lead to to a better sort of you know sex life, but I, I agree. I mean, you know, technically, we could look at someone coming and saying, "Well, I've got a you know, sort of erectile sort of uh, dysfunction," or or you know, sort of I've got a dry vagina. Great, um, we can talk about that. But you know, ultimately, I think it's, it needs to be a holistic approach and really understanding what what's behind it. What are the emotions? You know, so sort of, is it shame? Is it uh, is it is you know what what's going on in terms of energy and and mindfulness can help so so it's really a holistic approach and I agree with you you know that's that's what we need because yeah, we are yeah. we are one we you know we're not just sort of, uh, driven by by that energy which is obviously amazing as well mm. and and finally I just want to know because you mentioned you're not a therapist what is the specific difference with, between a sex coach for instance and a sex therapist or a sex yeah. Yeah, and that's that's really important as a as a difference. So the the therapist will kind of you know uh, is trained to to explore the past a lot more, sort of trauma that you've mentioned, you know, sort of all all those different aspects. Whereas a coach is focusing more on what's going on, sort of, you know, up to now and right. going forward. So it's focusing on it's it's future focus. So that's I think that's that's the big difference. And often you know, sort of uh, with the clients that I work with if I feel there's trauma that hasn't been yet um, uh, healed then you know so if we do a bit of work but I also refer them to to you know sex therapists and uh, and vice versa so so if you think of me as uh, someone who's going to help you setting up some sex goals and you know achieving them uh, while exploring holistically that that's that's what I do compared to uh, a therapist who will be more digging into the past Um, but we work you know sort of together very well yeah and generally, how often do people see you? Is there, do they see you for like six sessions? Do they, is it ongoing? Generally, what's the frequency with which you see your clients? So for how I, long? Yeah, I, I want to keep it as short as possible. I mean, I'm not here, you know, it's probably not a good thing for the business, but it's not I, financially I, good. <laughs> no, but equally, you know, I don't, I don't believe in, you know, therapy forever. I think it's really important that you're there to support people, you know, at a particular juncture in their life and then let them kind of, you know, carry on with and giving them the tools to, to do that on their own. So, so hopefully it's more, I'm more in the model of many clients and, you know, shorter, but you, on average around, around four sessions, you know, you, right. we usually go through 
um, everything that people need to go. I mean, obviously, there's there's no miracle. It's case by case. It depends on how willing they they want to kind of change things. But um, but equally, you know, so if, yeah, the long term sort of therapy. That's that's not what I'm what I'm into at all. No. And uh, finally. I assume people can see you via Zoom or can they, you're, you said you're in London, can they see you face to face as well? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's absolutely an option. I tend to do virtual face to face, you know, sort of as we're doing now, but but yeah. equally, you know, if people are keen to kind of do face to face, because sometimes it's easier, they're very happy to do that as well. Yep, they can. And how it. intimate does it become? Just- so, yeah, very good question. I think it's on everyone's mind, I'm sure. Um, I don't do, and, and again, some people are trained for that, but there is no sort of, you know, body work in, in my sessions. Right. I don't okay. do nudity, um, you know, for the reason that that's not something that I want to focus on specifically. You know, it's really kind of talk, talk um, focus, but, but I know, you know, sort of some, some people are trained to, to do that. And uh, that's also, you know, a very good way to, Especially around, you know, sort of, um, I think body shame and so on, you know, that's something that can really help people too. But, but I can recommend, you know, sort of, uh, <laughs> some specialists as well if, if that's, uh, that's on people's mind. Mm. Yeah. So nobody's going to be taking their clothes off in front of you. That's good to know. No, not, 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 uh, not, not in my practice anyway. <laughs> Anyway, it's been really, really lovely talking to you. It's gone so quickly. Yes, it has. It's amazing. And um, I really appreciate it. So I will put your website and everything on as links. Um, And just because you mentioned it and we're sponsored by Oh My Bod, Oh My Bod are a toy company that do virtual toys. So you can can have an app where your partner is in one country and you're in another and they can be controlling your pleasure. So your clients might want some of that. Yeah, I actually have recommended them, uh, not knowing that you were sponsored, but that, that was one of my recommendations. <laughs> yeah, no, it's really good. That's perfect. Um, Susan, I also wanted to do a little plug, if that's okay. I mean, yeah. I just, yeah, I was just going to mention earlier, but um, I just wrote a book called Manhunting in Manhattan. Oh, brilliant. Uh, <laughs> And it's all about sexual pleasure uh, in you know, sort of your late forties, and um, should be fun. It's coming out of um, you know, sort of a long term marriage, so it's capturing some of our, our conversation today. And so when's I'll, it coming out? It's coming out in three weeks, uh, end oh, of April. Yes, fantastic. Yes. And yeah. who's the publisher? It's uh, it's, the publisher is Troubadour. So um, oh, great. It's, yeah, so so we're looking forward to it. It's very excited. Oh. I co-wrote it with. Um, a younger woman who's um, who's also amazing. So yeah, looking forward to. Oh, to brilliant! That out there. Thank you so much. We'll do. We'll put a little plug for that in as well. Thank, Thank you. you, Marie. It's been great to talk to you. Pleasure. Thanks for reaching out, and uh, all the best. Bye. Bye.